In this video, we'll show you how to declare a variable in JavaScript, how to get data from the user using the prompt function, how to convert string data to integer data, how to do a calculation and store the result of that calculation to a variable, and then how to display information in an alert box. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open up Visual Studio Code. And once you open up Visual Studio Code, click on File, Open a Folder. And by opening a folder in VS Code, this allows you to go and say, this is the directory where I'm going to do most of the work. And so show me all the files in that directory. I'm going to go ahead and click on a directory called Practice Files. You can have any directory you want. You can even go make a brand new directory. By rat mouse clicking, New, Folder, my practice files and maybe this is where you're gonna put your data so you could choose that folder my practice files and click select folder and there's nothing inside of that folder yet let's go ahead and close this so let's go ahead and make a JavaScript file the way we can do that is by clicking file new file and let's go ahead and save it. File, Save As, and let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll call it Grader.js for JavaScript, and Grader as in we're going to grade something. Click Save, and it will now change that file and change the name on it, and this is where we can start typing our JavaScript. Now, what we want to do in this JavaScript program is we want to be able to do the following. The program that we're going to write is going to prompt the user to enter a name, prompt for their quiz average, which is worth 5% of their final grade, homework average, 10% of their final grade, the score on their first midterm mid test, which is worth 20%, their second midterm, which is worth 20%, their final exam test score, which is worth 25%, and then projects 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are ETH worth 5%. We're going to ask for all that information, and then we're going to calculate what their final average was for this class that they're taking through the use of gathering all this data through JavaScript prompts. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing that I need to do is I'm going to need to create variables. If you take a look back over here and you see this information, we know that we're going to need a variable for the username, for their quiz average, their homework average. All of these different things are going to have to be stored somewhere in our system. So I'm going to go ahead and create variables for them. And I do that by using the VAR, which stands for variable. JavaScript is a loosely typed language meaning we don't know the data type until the user types the data in. Now, in future versions of JavaScript, you're going to be able to strongly type. But right now, we're just going with loosely typed variables. When you create your variable name, you want to give it something descriptive of what you're storing. We're also going to use something called camel case. That allows us to keep the first letter of the first word lowercase and the second letter of, oh, sorry, the second word first letter uppercase. For instance, student name. Notice the first letter of the first word is lowercase and the first letter of the second word is uppercase. We need a student name. We need one for quiz average. We need a variable to hold the homework average. A variable to hold the midterm test one and the midterm test 2, midterm test 2, we need something for the final exam, and we need things for project 1 score, project 2 score, Project 3 score, and we also need Project 4 score. 
So that gets us our data that we will use. Now there is one more thing. We're going to use all of that information to calculate the final grade. So let's do one more variable. We'll call it final grade. And this will be the result of all of this. Now what a variable does is it just holds information. And we need to hold this information so we can do calculations. But how do we get the information? We get it through the prompt function. Prompt and you specify a question. For instance, in this case, we'll say, what is your name? Now the prompt function will display a box on the screen, but then it returns a value. After the user types in a value and they click OK, it takes whatever they typed in and it wants to assign it to something else. And we want to go ahead and assign it to a variable. So in this case, we say, what is your name? And we assign it to student name. Let's go ahead and type the prompts in for all the other ones. We could do one for the quiz average. Quiz average equals prompt. What is your quiz average? One thing you could do with the prompt, too, is you can give it a default value by adding another option here. And I did it by just putting a comma there. This one only has one option, which is the question you're asking. This one is going to have the question you ask, comma, and what do you want to show up in the box? And we'll put 100. Notice that I put it inside of quotes, meaning that's a string. The value 100 is not equal to 100. This is an integer, and this is a string. So what we want to do is turn the result of this string. So in other words, whatever they type in here, whether it's 100 or 90 or 80, whatever they type in when they click OK, that's going to come back as a string value. But since we're going to do mathematical operations on all of these other variables, we want them to be integer values. So I need to change that variable. And you do it by calling a function parse int. Make sure you get your parentheses. So this now says display a box with the question, what is your quiz average? Put a default value of 100, and whenever they click on OK, grab that value and turn it into an integer and store it to the variable quiz average. And I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing for all of these other variables. So I changed the size of this data, so you should be able to see it all a little bit better. It's not so big, but you can see the whole sentence. We've now said, display a prompt, what's your quiz average? Default to 100, whatever they type in, turn it into an integer, assign it to quiz average. Do the same thing for homework, midterm 1, midterm 2, final exam, project 1, 2, 3, and 4. So by the time we're done with all these prompts, we will have loaded up all of this information. Now we need to take that information and calculate a final grade. And here's how you do it. Final grade is equal to, and we want to take the quiz average and multiply it by 5%. And we want to add that to, and I'm going to tab things just to make it look a little bit cleaner our homework average multiplied by 10%. And I'm just going to copy this, paste, 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 one, two, three, four. And we're going to change copy and paste because if I copy and paste, there might be less chance for me to make a mistake typing. So I'm going to paste in all these variables into this formula. And then I'll go back and change what they're worth. 20%, 20%, 25%, 5%, 5%, and 5%. So this will now take the values of all the variables, multiply them by their weight, add them all up, and get a final grade and display it.
the last thing we need to do is now display the data. How do we display the data? We do it through an alert box. So we could say alert, let's display the student name, concatenation, which allows us to combine values. Earned a, in fact, let's just do earned, and then we'll concatenate the final grade and concatenate a percentage on there. So there is the source code. This now says take the contents of student name, add the word earned with spaces on both sides, add the final grade which we just calculated, and then concatenate or add a percent sign. Let's go ahead and save, clicking on file, save, or you can type control S. Now we want to run this code. Well, how could we do it? Well, one way is we could copy the code. And you can either grab at the top and pull down and copy it all. Or in Windows, you can press Control A, C, which allows us to copy it. We could have grabbed at the top, like I said, and then Control C. And then let's open up a browser window. And let's go to the inspector. Control Shift I in Windows or Command Shift I in Mac. Put your cursor in the console tab and right here press Control V so it pastes in all of your JavaScript code. And now let's go ahead and run it and see if we have any mistakes. What is your name? Mickey Mouse. OK. What's your quiz average? Mickey got an 80. Homework, 90. Midterm, 85. 90. 82. 100. 100. 95. 95. All the data has been calculated. Mickey Mouse earned a 96.2% in the course. And now you might say to yourself, well that can't be. There's no way. How could they get that high of a grade with lower test scores? Now you have to go back and look at your code and say, okay, are there any problems anywhere? For some reason, the numbers seemed a lot larger. And so you now have to debug. We've looked at the variables. That's okay. We have our prompts. That's okay. Here's where we calculate the grade. Well, maybe there's a problem there because really that's the only place I could have made a mistake. And so I start looking at the percentages. 5, 15, 35, 55. 60, 90, 100, and 110. Oh, we have a problem right there. Our final exam score was wrong. So this is a way you can go back and debug just by going through the logic of your code. Go back to Visual Studio, change that to be 25%, file, save all, control A, C, or highlight it all and press control C. Go back to here, paste in the code one more time, run it let's try again Mickey Mouse quiz average 80 90 85 90 82 100 100 100 and let's do 95 88.25 percent and that probably feels a lot better so just don't trust your programs work you need to make sure you debug them but this is a way that you can write JavaScript, create variables, get data, convert data, do a calculation, display the data, copy all your JavaScript, come over to the inspector in the console window, paste your JavaScript, and run it, and then test and debug.